So let's get right into installing Elasticsearch. Now, Elastic do provide you with some installation instructions of how to install their product. However, if you follow it on anything um, derived from Red Hat 9, so Alma Linux, Rocky Linux, CentOS 9, anything like that, you will come across a couple of problems that they don't talk about. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about them and also just show you the installation. So if you go to their downloads area, keep scrolling down until you get to Elasticsearch and click download. Pick your platform. For us, it's Linux. We're not doing it with Ubuntu, so we're not using apt-get here. We are using yum or dnf. So let's go with yum. And here are the instructions. Now, as I was going through the instructions earlier this week, I actually put together my own installation guide here. And this talks a little bit about the problems and gives you some copy and paste that will work and allow you to completely install the product with no issues. If you want a copy of that, there'll be a link to it in the description. So let's go right ahead. So let's copy this repository. Luckily, Elastic provide us with a nice yum repository that we can use. So this is a brand new machine, so much so actually that if we type Vim, we haven't even got it. So I'm going to go ahead and just, it's my editor of choice. Some people might choose Nano or something different. Um, I like Vim, so I'm just going to go ahead and install Vim. And then I'm going to go and create a repository. So an etc yum.repos.d elasticsearch.repo. And in here, I'm going to put the contents here. Now, let's just have a look here. We're doing a GPG check, and here is the key that we want to do a GPG check of. We are also not enabling this repository. Now, I actually think we should enable this. Um, I have a feeling that Elastic probably don't because Elasticsearch is a database, so you don't just want to blindly upgrade databases, etc. Um, but if you don't have it enabled and you do a yum update, you're not going to actually um, upgrade your package. In some scenarios, you may want to do that, some you may not. We'll leave it how they've got it. We just need to remember to enable. And also, this has got a GPG check. Now, you'll notice I've said that a couple of times now, and there's a very good reason for that. If I now go ahead and try and install Elasticsearch, making sure I enable the repo, Elasticsearch, what we'll notice is it will go and download the package. But let's see what happens when it tries to check the signature of the package. So in a minute, it's going to say to me, are you okay to import this key? Here we go. Error. Now the reason this is errored, and it's a bit frustrating actually, I, I would have thought Elastic would have solved this problem quite a while ago. Um, is that it's actually using a signing algorithm that's out of date. Now, it's using a signing algorithm of SHA-1, and that's the reason that we're getting this problem. Now, in my installation guide, I do talk about this, and we've got a couple of different options. We could set the default crypto policy to SHA-1 temporarily and then set it back. We could GPG check equals zero on the entire repository or do a no GPG check when we are installing the package. So let's talk over these options. The first one, we can change the crypto policy so that we're still gonna check the signature, but we're gonna use the SHA-1 algorithm to do that. We could just disable GPG checking in the repository or just for this package, we can not check the GPG key. To me, option one is the best. We're still going to check the key. Yes, it's got a weaker algorithm, but it's still got one and it's still worth checking it, check whether it's valid. So let's go ahead and do that. I have been having a look at the analytics for the channel and 97, nearly 98% of my viewers that watch my videos have not subscribed. Now, it really does help the channel out subscribing to my channel. Um, it helps me um, gain more traction, um, and ultimately, I'm able to put out much better videos. Please, would you do me a favor? And if you gain any value or learn anything from any of the videos that I teach, really appreciate that you would subscribe. Thank you. And there we go. That was just a copy and paste issue. 
um, that you have sometimes when copying out of documents. So when I've manually typed that in, that's gone straight through. So we've set the default policy now to SHA-1. If we go through and install this now, it's already downloaded, so that should be fine. And then it should say, do you want to sign? Accept the key. And there you go, key imported successfully. And let's give that a minute or two. And there we have it. Now there's a couple of things that we need to take note of post installation. If we scroll up a little bit here, we have our super user password. So the elastic user is a super user. We need to just make a note of this password. So I'm just gonna open up a text editor. I'm just gonna make a note of that password, there it is. It talks a little bit here about clusters. We're not doing anything with clusters. We're just having a, a one node elastic search instance. Uh, if we want to reset the password, we can do so doing this. If we need a enrollment token and we will need an enrollment token when we set up Kibana, this is how you do it. And if you want an enrollment token for elastic search nodes, this is how you do it. So we've done that. Let's scroll down, it's saying now that we need to do a daemon reload, we need to enable the service, and we need to start the service. However, if we go and do that right now, Elasticsearch will still fail to start. Let me show you. Let's do a daemon reload. Let's do an enable, just to make sure that when we restart the server, it comes up on boot, and we don't need to try and start it. And let's go and start the service. And there we have it. it takes quite a while to load. It does look like it's running. So if I do a status on this service, it says it's running. However, if I go and look at var log elastic search and look at the log files, scroll up a little bit, we can see here it says master not discovered yet. This node has not previously joined a bootstrap cluster and this node must discover master el eligible nodes. So what it's basically saying is it's trying to join a cluster, trying to find a master node. Now this is a single node setup that we're doing. Um, and even if it wasn't, you still need a single node to start building out a cluster. So there's a couple of things that we need to do. This will keep going and keep failing. If I try and curl Elasticsearch to get me a status, it won't be able to. So we need to go and have a look at the config. Now the great thing about all of the Elastic products is their configs are very similar. So in ETC and then the product name, whether that's Elasticsearch, Kibana, um, any of the Beats products, Farby, etc. It's all in etc, the name, and then the name.yaml. So we have elasticsearch.yaml. And if we go in, in here, it's very well documented, and we can scroll through and find many, many, many different things. There's two things in here that are really important. One is near the bottom, and it's called a cluster initial masters node, and it's set to local host. However, that's not sufficient in this example. We need to set that to the host name of the server, as in the name that we give it, not the fully qualified host name. If we scroll up to the top, what we'll notice is we've got a node name here. I'm gonna call it node one. I don't need to call it anything else. Node one is fine for this demonstration. And then at the bottom in this master nodes, this needs to be called node one, like that. And now, if I go and restart Elasticsearch, it takes a moment to stop and start. And when that has restarted, we will be able to 
connect to Elasticsearch. So let's give that a moment. And there we have it. So let's now go and have a look at the log file. Scroll up a bit. We can see here, look, node one, there's a license. It's valid. It's the basic license, etc., etc. Now the last thing we could actually do is do a curl on the file. So we can do a curl. We can do a dash U elastic. And remember that password we stored earlier? Here it is. Let's use that password. And then do HTTPS localhost 9200. As 9200 is the port that Elastic uses. If I run this now, it's going to fail because it's insecure. We can do one of two things. We can do a dash K. And here we go. We get back that it's node one that we called it. The cluster name is Elasticsearch. This is the build number etc etc or we can clear our screen and again we can do a curl we, instead of a dash k here we can do a dash dash ca cert we can give it the path to the cert which is elastic search certs http ca dot cert and again we can put our username in which is elastic and then that password again, which I'm just going to go and copy and paste. And then we should be able to hit enter and it's CA cert without a dash. And if I'd been reading my installation guide here, I would see it's just like that. And there we go. We didn't have to do, oh, we still got a dash K in there. Let's take this dash K out. And there we go. So we're, we're, we're using the CA cert. We're not doing a dash K, which is insecure and just ignoring any certificate errors. We're using the certificate that we should be using and we're now getting back that. So there we have it, a fully installed, very simple, but installed Elasticsearch setup that we can now connect to Kibana, uh, the Beats products and things like that to it and start building out our logging instance.